Hey, folks, how's it going? We're checking out more of the Royal Family. Hopefully, you guys have a fantastic day. All right, man, the last episode, I was definitely hoping for more Nana throughout the entire episode. She was just at the end, maybe the last five to eight minutes. But it was still really good, man. Like, the little bit of time she was there kind of been annoying. And it's funny how I ended with Jim just getting pushed over the edge and, like, not want to hear anything else from her. <laughs> anymore her story uh so he just got up and left to the bar after that whole show they put on with like dave asking if you want to go get a beer him saying like you know i gotta ask barbara and gotta gotta blah 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 put on the entire show and he just ends up saying screw it <laughs> whatever consequences come with getting this beer i'm out of here man i wonder if she's gonna be in this episode since she's supposed to be staying another week it'd be nice if she is man because i would like to have more of her in episode as opposed to like the, just the end but either way the previous episode was enjoyable so let's go ahead and jump into this one folks and we will talk about it more at the end Don't worry about it, Jim. I'll get it. Hello, Barbara. Hey, Mom. Can't see any wounds uh -huh. or anything. It's really lively, which is great. Oh, Mom. Oh, lovely chap. All right, Jim. How are you, Dave? What's up with Barbara, Jim? She looks a bit upset. Denise has gone in the kitchen with her. Oh, there's nothing wrong with her. It, it's the menopause. A bloody change, you know what? I'm up to there with really. it. Mm. Just as bloody skivvy. It was worse when your nana was staying. I'd come home from work and that sink would be full of pots. They'd be fighting and I just wanted to get my coat on and go somewhere. I try and think of things for him to do. He does the crossword in the paper, right? So I bought him a puzzler the other day and he just went mad. He said I'd wasted one pound seventy, and he wouldn't speak to me for the rest of the night. Oh, but wow. it's not a life, this. It's just a bloody existence. And he's always got bits of food stuck in his beard. Well, he never has a wash. How long does it last this change, Malarkey? Don't know, a few years, isn't it? Bloody hell. I mean, he has a wash. He's when he goes to the doctors. He just sits there, mouthing off in that chair. Another time I came in, your yeah, nana's face asked. was like thunder. He wouldn't put her drops in. He is just so selfish. Poor Anthony. Got no confidence. Jim's knocked it all out of him, calling him a lankish streak of piss all the time. Well, well, he has got a point there. Has <laughs> <laughs> your mama there changed yet? Oh. No, I don't know why I'm here, Denise. Oh, ma. Oh, no, I was thinking about leaving him. Oh, you could come and live with us. No, you could. Oh, Denise. Because when that baby's born, I'm going to be rushed off my feet. <laughs> Put her into hey. more stress. <laughs> Tell you what, Dave, you should have seen her before. Take care of baby. She's gone too far this time. Why? Bang. She just switched the telly off. No need for that. That's <laughs> what I mean. Oh my god, come on. Oh. <laughs> she turned the TV off. Oh. The trouble with me, lads, is I'm too easy bloody going. She walks all over me. I mean, the day she does work in the bakery, it can be half seven, quarter to eight before my tea's ready. But I don't say nothing, I just get on with it. <laughs> Did you that easy going? He's got no conversation about him at all. Do you know, he absolutely hated work. Hated it. I always thought that when he gave it up, I'd see a lovely side of Jim that I'd never seen before. There isn't one. No. You know, the doctor said about this HRT thing. I said, have a little think and go discuss it with your husband. All Jim could say was that HRT's horse is piss and that them doctors are raking it in. She'll turn her nose about him too. Well, that was three hey, Dad. What have you said to me, Mum? Why do you always have to upset her? What? You're horrible to her. You're always horrible to her. And you're horrible to Nana and all. What the hell, what have I done now? You never say anything nice to her. You never even offer to take her anywhere. That's the bloody menopause, that, isn't it? And anyway, what about you? You're bloody lazier than me, aren't you? 
I bet you still haven't cooked them a single bloody meal since you've been married. Has she, Dave? I have, haven't I, Dave? Not a meal. Oh, shut it, you. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get involved. This is about you. No, it's about you and your bloody mother, because she's poisoned your mind against me, hasn't she? And you're always on her bloody side. You're the stick as bloody thieves, the pair of you. Why don't you just get your nana down here and the whole bloody coven can have a go at me? <laughs> i tell you what, Dave, you've made a hell of a mistake marrying oh, into shit. this lot, lad. You don't deserve her, you? She doesn't bloody deserve bloody me. <laughs> Dave, why do you always take his side? Well, it's your mum's menopause, isn't it? Correct, Dave. It's not her menopause, it's the way he treats her. Who's, um... Who's going to wash the baby's things, Dave? Will you stop shit staring it, Dad? Oh, no. There's nothing to do with you. That's it, Anthony. You about to walk into it. Oh, that's... Did the mom leave? <gasps> it's me, ma'am. She's got a coat on. Dad, will you go after her? Me go after her? Why don't you go after her? I'm pregnant. Dave, you go after her. I'm watching this. She's probably only gone to Mary's to have a bloody go at me from round there. Anyway, Mary's the only one who doesn't know I'm a big, fat, lazy ass. She's not gone in Mary's. I wonder where she's going. Mum said Auntie stormed out. Now she's gone. I'll be next. You're too bloody lazy to storm off anyway, you. <laughs> no, you're the lazy one. You're the bloody lazy one. Gosh, you're way lazier than me. My ass, you are. No, you are. She is. He is. Oh, I think it's us. Oh, hey! 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the wrong answer. Yeah. I thought it was that car. I'm pretty sure it was that car. Uh, <sighs> alcohol, I thought you'd have known that, Denise. Never even drank ethanol. Uh, oh, she looks dead upset, Dad, don't she? Yeah. But she still won a grand, though, didn't she? Oh, yeah. Gutted, though, isn't she? Yeah. Just left here £1,000, and now we've just got time to pick one more play. You know the drill, all of you. Nine of you left. Fastest thing. My nine asses all going at the same time there, Dave. <laughs> hey, nine little bottoms chewing on their undies. <laughs> I'm close to winning the lottery on Saturday. Yeah? One bloody number I wanted. Number 17, and 18 popped out. Was that bloody close, eh? That close to winning a tenner. A tenner. <laughs> hey, Dad. What was that old quiz show that you used to really like with him? Um, what's his name? Fingy. Uh, Roy Walker. Oh, catchphrase. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, say what you say. If you say it, say it. Oh, that's a good answer, but it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> say what you say. If you say it, say it. That's funny, Mitchell Cash Racing before. Uh, say what you see. You see it. Say what you see. If you see it, say it. Stop it. I'm only saying what I see. You're not seeing it, so stop saying it. You're going to keep going. Ah, oh, GM, don't say that stupid. You're all right, Bab. I have to be, don't I? I've walked the length of this neighbourhood looking for you. <laughs> You've had as worried as of our bloody minds, eh? That was it. Did she go far for it? Where did she go, man? I just went for a little walk to clear my head. Yeah. Is there anything the matter, man? No, nothing. Nothing that won't keep. I've kept it in for over 27 years now. i tell you what, Bob. There was a woman just like you on the change. Just made a £1,000 there on the telly. So it's not all doom and gloom. 
So look, you and your change, you just sit there and I'll make us a nice cup of tea. We'll have to get a portable in here, Bob. Is it Harwich? Or is it Dover? Some little things. Sugar bowl's empty, Bob. Where's the sugar? Top left-hand cupboard. Have a look at the question. Where it always is. Right. What's the most common bird of prey found in the United Kingdom? Pepper. Is it the red kite? Is it the golden eagle? Any like biscuits, Bob? Bob? Some penguins well, in the big Tupperware one. box. Okay. Most common bird I don't know if he's actually going to make the whole process. In the or somehow she had to go Where is the Tupperware box? In the cupboard with the cornflakes. Yeah. Hey, Bob. We'll get through this change thing together. You know what I mean, kid. Yeah. Making a little brew, making a lovely pot of tea. Yeah. It was actually really sweet. It was such a small moment. It was very sweet. You know the piano is on my foot. You hum it, sir, and I'll play it. <laughs> you hum it, and I'll play it. <laughs> a nice cup of tea, David. Thank you, James. What are you drinking? Who wants to be a millionaire? I bloody don't. I'm already a millionaire. With a million pound of love in the bank. Dave, you have not, Dave? <laughs> Good one, that, James. And I tell you what, tomorrow night I'd like to cordially invite you round to my simple, modest home, that's David, Denise and the Grapefruit, <laughs> to join me and my lovely wife, Barbara, who will come home from work to find me entertaining her sweet-smelling mother whilst preparing a meal. You're not going to cook. Are you going to cook? My onion gravy, a delicacy, will be gently caressing the fluffy mash, which will be straddled by two succulent sausages. Hey, how does that grab you, Bob? OK, Dave. <laughs> well, I believe it when I see it. Hey, I'm gone. Tomorrow night? That's the darts final in the feathers, Jim. Who oh, bloody hell, you had forgot all about that. Ah, well, the thought was there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what do you say? You <laughs> <laughs> stand up. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, I'm missing that show. Oh, uh, that was a really good moment between him and her and like the kitchen dude. I thought it was very sweet. It was just uh, so subtle, you know. Like they'll get through it together, you know. It's very, very sweet. Uh, this was good, man. I thought she might feel bad and nobody came out to look for her when she went off for like a walk, or whatever. But it probably is better off to leave her alone. Sometimes people do need the, you know. They don't want to be followed. They don't want you running after them. They just want to get away from things for a little bit to clear their head. Some of the shows, of course, I didn't get what they were talking about. Like the host that they were like, pretending to be. I missed that. And it's kind of funny that we kind of sat and watched, I will say, like at least 10 minutes of a millionaire, you know? So I'm guessing they have a deal with something with the show or whatever. Maybe because it's on the same network. I don't know that they're able to like put so much of it in the episode. Because, uh, you know, a lot of like shows you watch, they try to limit almost everything covering hands up the whole shebang just out of like you know not want to be sued and stuff by like other companies other shows and all that jazz you know i kind of figured she's going to come in and help him a little bit since he's not used to doing anything in the kitchen and he, i figured that uh, he's going to screw up at some point this is like when is he going to botch this he's going to mess up some way somehow 
it was good to see them work it out. But everybody works things out in their own way, you know. And I, I like the way they worked it out. It was very, very simple. And him just doing that, that, that small gesture. Small gestures go such a long way with people. And I, I just feel so many people don't understand that, man. And even I've screwed up like that in the past, man, where I didn't realize just something so small can mean so much to somebody. You have to reflect on, like, the mistakes and stuff you make. And actually take the time to do, like, those really small things, man. Those small gestures of kindness, you know. Yeah, man. I just, I don't know. I thought it was very sweet. A very subtle thing, a very subtle nod, even after being with each other for so long. I thought it was funny that he planned the entire next day out, and Barb was like, I'll believe when I see it. And as soon as he mentioned the show or contest or whatever, it's like, <laughs> well, the thought was there. That was, that was great, man. Sometimes it is the thought that counts. So, And they're right, man. He really does give Anthony a hard time when she mentioned that, like, he ran him out of the house. Because you really, you could tell it was really hurting his feelings that day when he was talking about the whole manager of the band thing. He kept laughing at him. You tell it was really, really hurt Anthony's feelings, dude. And the how much crap they talk made him insecure in his relationship. So he probably botched that as well because of them, you know, planning their own, you know, stuff on top of him saying, like, how they wouldn't allow it to happen and all that jazz. And Anthony wasn't this episode at all. Hmm. That, was, that, was, that was different. I think it's the only episode I haven't seen him in where he was just missing the entire episode. But yeah, man, this is a good episode. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.